this video, we're going to talk about another participants of the Women's Candidates Tournament 2024, and this is Nurgul Salimova. She qualified at the candidates from the FIDE World Cup 2023, and she showed her best form in that tournament. The game I choose for you guys today is from World Cup against Anna Muzicic. They went all the way to the finals, and this is one of the games, one of the decisive games. And here we have Nurgul with white pieces. She goes 1d4. Anna responds with d5, we have c4, and Anna decided to accept the queen's gambit. Knight f3, knight f6, this is the theory, and we have e3, white wants to recapture the pawn with the bishop, so black says, okay, do that, then I will just attack your center with c5. White castles, now black goes with a6. The idea is to play b5, bishop 2, b7, and then to develop your kingside pieces usually what we do in chess is we're trying to develop the kingside pieces first to make sure that our king is safe just like white did here white first developed the king side to make sure that the king is safe all the pieces on the queen side are still not developed but black is doing the opposite why is this happening? In this opening, Queen's Gambit accepted is quite common practice that if you first castle your king, then you're gonna struggle with the light square bishop. So first, what Black is doing is Black is getting some space advantage on the queen side and willing to get this bishop on b7 on time. You might be too late if first you give the priority to the king. Okay, after a6 here, White actually let Black to play b5 and she went for Rook to e1. Well, the thing is that if you want to make your bishop happy, then you are going to make your king in danger. That's the idea. Actually, after rook e1, white wants to play e4 and d5 to open up the e-file. Black here went for knight to c6, knight to c3, and b5 happened. Bishop goes on d3, and you guys, this is the uh, theory uh, after bishop d3 this might look a little bit artificial why not to get this bishop on b3 because this is probably better diagonal or why not to get this bishop here on f1 the thing is that with the bishop on d3 first of all you are keeping the eye on h7 a square and also after b4 which is quite common move here in this kind of structures you are supporting your knight to get on e4 so you need this bishop to be on d3 well black goes with bishop to b7 and anna managed to solve the problem of the light square bishop now she has to castle the king let's see how nurgle responded with bishop to b7 she goes with a4 the queen side attack here uh you have to make decision either you take the pawn which is not the a common move in this structure because you are just uh, weakening the pawn structure or you have to push the pawn on before you can't really leave here this pawn because it will be just lost but it goes with before attacking the knight and this is 94 exactly what we're talking about that bishop on d3 is supporting the knight 24 this knight on the other hand is keeping the eye on c5 pawn so black just decided to capture the pawn on d4 and trade the uh, c5 uh, pawn to it knight to f6 has been played here to be honest i haven't seen this move before uh, but white actually decided to take it now anna took it back with a pawn Usually we don't like to double the pawns or to ruin the pawn structure because if you're going to castle, then this king will be on the uh, open file. So we don't really want to do that, but Anna's idea is to open up the file for herself. She wants to play rook to g8, she wants to attack the pawn on g2, the bishop also gets into the game and she has actually planned to keep the king in the center. So I just captured the pawn on d4 now if you recapture this back and if you think that oh i'm gonna win the pawn this is a very uh, common trap here it's better not to fail for it it's always good to uh make your opponent fail for these ideas bishop to b5 is a check and you are basically winning the queen so of course anna saw that and she decided to play knight to a5 this is a little bit odd move, to be honest. Um, I don't really know why she played this knight here. Probably she just wanted to open up the diagonal uh, for the bishop. Um, and it was her um, idea in this position. White 
develop the bishop on f4 and we have rook to c8 queen to e2 and bishop to d6 uh, offering the bishop trade the thing is that uh, the pawn on a6 was hanging and instead of making a passive move here i decided to play bishop to d6 and try to trade some of the pieces now the queen is guarding here the pawn and it's always good to trade some of the pieces when you're playing against isolated pawn because we know that isolated pawn is weaker in the end game also when you have the king in the center you want to trade a lot of pieces in the game actually salimova decided not to trade the bishop but she played a very nice move bishop to h6 this move actually stops black to play castle i'm sure black was not planning to do that but anyway this pawn is just locking down the king side and also somewhere just threatens bishop to g7 to be played uh, and after knight to b3 now rook is hanging rook goes on d1 very nicely centralized rooks here those pieces are looking uh, quite nice you have also a beautiful bishop here attacking on h7 pawn attacking on a6 pawn the knight is centralized here also just blocking the diagonal and this bishop is controlling the full king side so all white pieces are quite nice and happy uh, at this point anna goes with queen to a5 and we do have a first strong move in this game this is d5 this is a pawn sacrifice you can actually take it with the queen or with the bishop if you take with the queen then you are just going to fall for some traps after bishop to b5 you're gonna lose the queen for rook and the bishop probably so this is not a good deal cannot take with the e pawn because this is the pin so basically you have to take it with the bishop white captured the pawn on a6 very often um people are telling us that oh don't trade your central pawn for the side pawn it's not good but at this point by giving up the d pawn white actually open up the d file the rook from d1 is getting now into the game and there can be some ideas like capturing on d5 and giving the check or the the other way so white pieces are so happy in this position black goes with rook to c5 uh the rook was hanging and also there is some issue on the fifth rank in this position so she goes with that and bishop to b5 at this point white is already having very big advantage if not winning the king lost the right to castle here and had to play king to d8 and we do have bishop e3 attacking the rook black here played rook to c7 and this is a final move guys if you haven't seen it this is a beautiful move that salimova has played so she goes with rook to d5 um very very nice move basically you are just uh, opening up the e file and you might ask like okay and then what if i take this rook and here we have another brilliant move which actually uh, gave salimova the ticket to canada to qualify for the candidates tournament and this is bishop to b6 and this is just beautiful the idea of this and it started with rook to d5 rook to d5 opened up the e file so right now you are pretty much forced to move your queen away or capture the bishop let's say and we do have the checkmate on the back rank the bishop and the rook sometimes are enough to checkmate the offense king so this is pretty beautiful you can't really save this you can't really move your rook this rook is also pinned um the best you can do probably is to save your king but then you're gonna lose your queen so this is very nice tactic and you guys in this game we clearly see how tactical salimova is and how dangerous she can be to any of the players of the candidates tournament 2024 thanks very much for watching i'll see you in the next one